Soil is everything to my friend Albert. He loves to work the land, and he was a farmer once. Kuule, ütle mulle, mis, mis kartumid sa maha täna paned? Eestima. Eestima. Ongi Eestima. Eestima. See on see kartu seal Eestima. Our roots are still in Estonia, though Albert and I now live in England. I left six years ago, but Albert last saw his homeland in 1944. For Albert, Estonia is still the free country of his dreams, where he spent the first 35 years of his life. Estonia today is very different from the land he left. This year, he's coming back to see it. Oh, it's actually so wonderful to look at the map of Europe before the war. What is it, 1938? 1938, yes. It, it looks so natural to, to be part of Europe and to be a separate country. And this sea connects all these countries around. That is a lifeline. And this develops a culture and mentality of the people. And you know, when people are speaking about the Baltic independence, they say, oh, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, they're so small, small they can't do it. No resources, yes. But I mean, look at the map. <laughs> yeah. We're not the smallest countries in Europe. But in the people's minds, they are still thinking imperially. That things must be big to be good. <laughs> but small things are good as well. Yes. But Stalin thought otherwise. In a secret pact with the Nazis, Stalin took over the independent Baltic states in 1940. The people had no idea what was to follow. In four years, Estonia underwent three occupations, first by the Russians, then by the Germans, and again by the Russians. Estonia men were mobilized, first by the Red Army, then by the Wehrmacht. Albert joined neither. Instead, he fought the Russians as a partisan. Wounded during the first weeks of the war, he survived the German occupation working on his farm. This is the drawing of my farmhouse, as I remember it. I last saw it in 1944. I think it was July. Or August. I have heard rumors, but I really don't know exactly what to expect. have become the only means of expressing the nation's grief and deep sense of injustice. Each singer at the song festival tells a heartfelt story, known to each and every one of them, but unknown by the outside world. the soil of the United Kingdom, but my spirit, spiritual heart is there. Spiritually I'm there, bodily I'm here, and who am I? Tell me. That's the question that has haunted Albert all the years of his exile. It was hard to start anew for Albert and his Estonian wife Emma whom he met in a displaced persons camp in Germany. Because Emma worked for the British, they finally made their home in Cornwall, in Foy, where Emma is now buried. Albert never found work as a farmer, but became a sailor and a ship chandler. 
Well, he's got he's got his citizen's papers now. He'll soon be a cousin jacker. Cousin <laughs> jacker. You That's... know what that is? That's a Cornishman. What a wonderful man you've been. A good servant of the community, a super chap. Your English is hardly any better than the first day you got here. <laughs> At least two people in the town can understand everything you say. Everybody <laughs> yeah. understands exactly what a lovely man you are. I set to the place and live forever. We didn't expect to stay so long here in uh, exile. We thought after the war that all oh, this will be sorted out in a few months or not within a few years, but it became 50 years that's not been sorted out yet. Sometimes difficult, but I have managed. And I'm not the only one, I think there are many people like that. Albert is right. There are small exile communities scattered all over the country. Once a year they come together in London to celebrate a song and dance festival. My own story is a happy one. I fell in love with an Englishman. We got married in Estonia and eventually the Soviets gave me a visa to come to England. To the English I was strange. A girl from the Soviet Union who said she wasn't Russian, but Estonian, a name most had never heard of. To this generation of exiles, I was strange too, brought up in Soviet Estonia, a communist society which rejected them, even treated them as enemies. No wonder they live in the past. Oh, my Estonia is like it was before I left, you know, sunshine and flowers and nothing bad whatsoever. Roots are so strong. Estonia. <laughs> Estonia is my homeland. Homeland is where, you, where you're born, where your roots are. Blood has to be first. Yeah, yeah I suppose, yeah. I mean, it must be go back to the thing about the roots, that the parents being the Estonian thing is what keeps you there. I mean, that's what keeps you going on. And you know, to sum it up, it's very hard in a couple of words, but. There's a feeling inside that will always be there. It's Estonian, and that's the only thing I can say. The parents of those brothers were among tens of thousands of Estonians who fled when the Russians stormed back in 1944. The exiles created their own history. But those who stayed behind in the burning towns and villages learned to live in an occupied country, cut off from the rest of Europe. This ferry from Helsinki to Tallinn has been the only direct link with the West. Families have been separated too long. That's why I've organized a group of 80 to go back home for the festival. Only an hour now separates this man from the mother he has not seen for nearly half a century. Yeah, I've been thinking about it this last half an hour what our life could have been and should have been, and what it is now. If you ask for the most success, by most... I hope I'm not going to be disappointed. Or I like to think I'm going back to the home I left behind in 1944. Yet I know it cannot be. So I don't know. Albert's only surviving relatives are his brother's children. <laughs> Many of my group have been frightened to come back.
The Estonian countryside of today may even look similar to the Estonia of their childhood. A quiet, unhurried land, as if asleep since the 30s. Stirring in surprise to welcome unexpected guests from far away. The old capital city of Tallinn feels younger again. Her medieval streets are full of dancers and singers. The song festival is about to start. It's a time of hope. I actually do feel Estonian, yeah. It's nice to hear the language being spoken in most places, you know, and that's, that's nice. That, that makes me feel good, that part of it. I actually do feel that so I do belong sort of here. Part of me does, yeah. That's a nice feeling, you know, the family and that are here. Yeah. It's, it's hard to feel totally Estonian and that you've come home, when you, especially when you see so many Russian soldiers about things. I was quite, I didn't expect to see quite so many. I mean, every time you walk down the road, there's another one. The presence of the Soviet army is no surprise to Albert. On the way to his home farm, his route is barred by a column of Soviet tanks. On the very road they came down 50 years ago. Albert's fight against the Russians was a fight for the farm his family had run for generations. For him, remember, soil is everything. This is what's left of the house. Are you my mother a peremies or a peremies? Yeah. No. Because they don't know me. They. Yeah. Yeah. Me piksel, sinu, no, meil on üks kõik. 
Kuidas see? Ei ole. Ei ole. Ei ole. Ei ole. Esimest kord ma tulin vaatama, et mis kes siia tulid ja et mis see siin vaatate. Ja no kui minu isa läks siis ära, me ehitasime näid siia omale elamise. Ja. Isa läks siis ära ja mis sõrvab. Aasta, mis... Oot, 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 me tulime 48. aastal. Aasta, see ka siis ma olen alles ei olnud. Alles? Me ju elasime siin sees. Siin ma olen 48. aasta alles ei olnud. Ja oli, oli, see maja oli siis alles. You can't say that the land is ruined as a whole, but the old farms, the homesteads are ruined. And that is a sad. I don't know where we can sort out it will be a long Long, long time before it happens. But my heart was at farming. Not too much land, sky, forests, waters, lakes. The Estonian flag took its colors from a fraternity at Tartu University to which Albert belonged. In 1934, at his local church, the flag was blessed at its 50th anniversary ceremony. For the last 50 years, this fraternity was banned by the Soviet authorities, and this is the first year that it has met since. Ma väga rohkem mul elus ei anda. Mulle kärs on Albert. Tärs minu nimi. Ta saab tõttu aastat. Ma ei kunnis. Siin on aareb endale minud vaga. Ja ma tean, ma ei jakud kuulis. On säärane, et see on Tartust kaasa võetud, kaasa toodud. Kui oli see suur põgenemine 1944. Või veelise varem. Ja kuna ajad on niivõrd nüüd muutunud. I've spent the best part of my life in England, and I do realize that I'm more English than Estonian, although I'd, I'd love to say that I'm 100% Estonian, I'm not. No, 46 years has done its work, I'm afraid. I got my education in England, England is my home country, and although I love Estonia, I would certainly come back here. I won't come back to live here, uh, even if it was free, because my life's been in England for too long, and I'm in many ways English. I am not... I'm not... <laughs> I'm nobody. I'm not, not English properly, I'm not Estonian properly. Something in between. <laughs> Something in between, yes. But my heart is here. The Estonian flag is back at the front of the festival parade. When the last festival took place in 1985, the same parade marched through the streets under the hammer and sickle and the portraits of Lenin and Brezhnev. It's also the first time 
but Estonians from abroad have been invited to take part. This group comes from the Estonian community in Argentina. conductor Gustav Ernesaks and the guest of honor, the president of Lithuania, Vitautas Landsbergis. It's a festival of solidarity of Estonian people and all the three Baltic peoples. <laughs> what do you feel today? I feel a great hope about our freedom. The parade takes four hours to pass on its way to the Song Festival grounds. Albert has a more personal journey to make, to visit his former sweetheart. Estonians are a country people. Most of us come from small villages where dancing and singing is a way of life. The Soviets saw no threat in these simple peasant dances and allowed us to keep our music and costumes. They made a big mistake.
By the end of the 40s, Estonia had lost a quarter of its population. Many of those who couldn't run away from the Soviet troops were rounded up and sent off to Siberian labor camps. Albert's brother spent 10 years there. When he came back after Stalin's death, his homeland had changed. Most of the population now live in cities which are half Russian, with Russian problems. <laughs> but it's here I meet an optimist. Michael Tarn is an American Estonian who has chosen to come back and work here as a journalist. I've been here about four months, and my initial impressions, being an Estonian, were somewhat romantic. It was a bit like coming to a dreamland that you've heard about as a child, a never-never land, and stepping through the gates and being here. Uh, at first, that perhaps clouds uh, some of the impressions. Uh, but right away, you can see that there is something wrong with the society. There's a kind of a sickness here, and it's pervaded everything. So now I'm, I'm a little less romantic, and I see a lot of the real problems, and they range from the military occupation, which Estonians will point out, which is a burden, to social problems, uh, drunkenness, problems with getting housing, uh, environmental problems that are causing probably causing very serious health problems, although nobody's quite sure because studies aren't done. Nothing is going to change quickly. It's not going to happen fast. But given Estonian history, and given what they have done in the past during their days of independence, I think they can pull themselves out of this, probably faster even than a lot of other Eastern European countries. His optimism is shared by everyone today. Can you guess how many of us are here? 10,000? 100,000? No, 400,000. This flame has been carried through every town and village. It's a symbol of our desire to be free.
Robert is not at the festival. The symbols that have a meaning for him are very different. Albert is far away from the crowds. He's on a pilgrimage of his own. returned from Siberian camps. One who did is Gunnar. Both men have been exiles under very different circumstances. Gunnar spent 17 years in Siberia. You are optimist despite what you are going to do, what's been done to you. I don't know, I've been a long time away from here. I don't know, but I'm a little bit pessimistic, pessimistic about it. Give us only the freedom. Yes, but <laughs> before... how long it will take? No, we have begun already. Albert is a practical man. He wants to get the land back and pass it over to his nephew. He visits the office of the local collective farm to register his claim.
It's Albert's last day on his old farm. Do you think what has happened to your farm is in some way representative of what has happened to your country? Let me think about it. I think to some extent, to great extent, yes. All the country is somewhat derelict when you look into it in more detail. On the distance, it's not so bad, really. The wilderness is nice. For a picnic here, there's nothing wrong. These uh, remains and ruins are, from the distance, quite picturesque. But how can you build up a country again? Because there is the hope we could that see. That is a dif difficult thing. That is a difficult thing. I don't know. I do not know how to do it. Some people think that you must change the economy first and social, social order later, but uh, it hasn't worked that way. It takes the Soviet Union. The social order was changed 70 years ago. Promises were big. In 10 years, we'll take over the capitalists. In 20 years, 30 years. After 70 years, it's getting worse and worse all the time. How do you feel about it, going away and maybe never coming back? And yet, having left No, you. I can live in the past. I can walk all the roads, I can do the roads, I can meet all the people who are known in the past. I can picture them and recall them in my mind's eye easily, even, the, even in technical. But future, nobody can predict. I do hope Albert comes to the last day of the song festival. I'd like him to share my past, when I, as a little girl, sang in one of the choirs myself, wearing a beautiful costume and feeling so proud to be there. I'd like him to feel that everything is not lost. I don't think Albert has ever seen so many Estonians all together. Can you imagine that, you know, on this wall there were all these pictures of Lenin and... I saw, I never saw it myself, of course, but I saw the pictures of it. Was that one of the reasons why you thought you wouldn't come to the Song Festival? Because you thought it would be a propaganda show? No, it was, certainly was uh, the first ones after the war, well, that part of propaganda. But I think the spirit was always here. Yes, that's right. The soul of the nation was always here.
absolutely wonderful. It just really got to me. I mean, I was sort of crying at the end, the songs at the end were, and still am now a bit tearful, but it um, really got to me. I really felt truly Estonian today. I really did. I mean, it just... I felt that I wanted to be part. I wanted to get out there oh, and yeah. sing and dance and, you know, do everything. Yes, I really wanted to. I didn't think I was going to feel this emotional, no. And today it's brought it to me that exactly where I'm from and with all this, you know, with everyone around me, we've already seen all these lovely costumes and these people and hearing the language being spoken all the time. And what they said it's, in it as well, just, though. It's I just mean. great. It's just so nice to be here. This is only the beginning. But it keeps the national spirit going for a while. But there's plenty to do. The mother's, the mother's tax working day. This was, yes, it was a nice, nice interlude. But there's plenty of work to be done. Every day is not a singing festival. It's time to leave, but it's difficult. We want to go back home to England, but we also want to stay at home in Estonia. Some of us will come back to our roots. Some of us have never left them. Happier that I've been back. I can go away from this world a happier man that I've been there. Kallis nainen, sinulla on natukaa kootettu ennen kuin mä siellä olen. <tos> 